Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are diving into an important topic for both developers and IT professionals and that is PFX certificates. First, let me explain what a PFX certificate is. So a PFX or a personal information exchange file is a password protected certificate which is used primarily for code signing. It's part of the PKCS 12 format which means it can store multiple cryptographic objects such as x509 public key certificates, x509 private keys, x509 certificate revocation lists or CRLs and you can add even generic data. This file format is commonly used to digitally sign applications, ensuring that the software is trustworthy and hasn't been tampered with. Now you might be wondering, why do we need a PFX certificate? In simple terms, it's all about security and trust. When you digitally sign an application with a PFX certificate, you're telling your users and the operating system that the software is from a verified source. If you distribute your software without this, users mm -hmm. might encounter security warnings or worse, refuse to install the software altogether. So the PFX certificate is a crucial thing for code signing to make sure your users feel safe when they install your application. The most common method for code signing is to purchase a certificate from a certified authority. But for internal testing or where you don't want to incur costs, a self-signed certificate is a great option. So how do these certificates actually work? Well, first the developer generates the certificate and uses it to sign the application. Next, the certificate is deployed to the target machines, usually via group policies or any other methods uh, which are more popular today in the cloud environment. And once deployed, the operating system will trust the application during the installation. Now, let's see how you can generate a self site certificate with PowerShell. This is where we get hands-on. So PowerShell has a built-in commandlet called new self-signed certificate that allows you to generate this kind of certificates. So here's how you do it. First, we need to open up a PowerShell and actually I think I need to open a PowerShell with administrative rights. So give me a second. Now that the PowerShell is open, let's create a new certificate. So we are going to use the new self-signed certificate commandlet, custom one. This is our subject. This is our key usage, the friendly name, where we are going to store it, the extension, and that's it. Let's hit enter. And there you go, the certificate has been created. Uh, this is already paste, uh, paste, by the way, in this store. So let's open up a cert uh, MGR. And you can find your create a certificate under trusted root certificate authorities. Now let's export the certificate as a PFX file. This is done using the export PFX certificate com commandlet. As you can see, I already tried to do it here, but let me try to explain it and I now realized why it didn't work. So let's take it from the top. We can use the export PFX certificate commandlet to do this. We are going to say that we want to export this certificate current user my and this here is our thumbprint so let's copy paste the thumbprint cool next the file path where we want to export this certificate i'm going to do it somewhere in my documents advanced installer and i think i'm going to use the last project here cool and now the problem is if you want to export a pfx certificate you either need a password to encrypt it with or you can designate it as protect tool for a specific user or group, but then your computer needs to be domain joined. So in this case, we need to create a password. So everything I typed in here, it's absolutely zero. So let's create a password. To create a password is not that simple just to type password one, two, three, four. We need to convert to a secure string, right? So let's say that we knew we do a new variable called my password, which we are going to convert to a secure string. Easy, good. And now our string will be one, two, three, four. 
it will be force and let's do it as plain text put and now let's copy paste this again from here to here and the password will be my password that i previously done and there you go we should have our pfx and yes this is our test pfx file but wait if you don't want to deal with this command line scripts there's an even an easier way to generate self-size certificates using advanced installer now let's open up advanced installer and let's create a blank project let's let's say it's an architect one and if we go to the di digital signature page we check the enable sign link and under software publisher certificate section we can use use from certificate store and click create here you can type whatever you want in the subject friendly name let's say i want it on the local computer click ok and there you go right now we have a new test certificate that we can use and there you have it you now know what a pfx certificate is why it's important for co-signing and how to generate one using both powershell and advanced installer if you found this video helpful make sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any further tutorials